centenary year. Now on the 31st of December we look back at our centenary year and we look ahead to what's to come. Welcome to worship. So Lord we come to our opening prayers of this service and our prayers of thankfulness and we just really want to thank you for the past 12 months at Queen Street. For those that have come through the doors to our various events celebrating our centenary. To those who have helped, we've been blessed with so many volunteers, Lord, for everything that we've done. And for those whose lives that we hope we've touched, that have come into a connection with you, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for Queen Street for the work that's gone into the last hundred years. And we look forward to the future, Lord.
change and the sound of breaking chains. But the sound of our praises be one and the same as Jubilee reclaimed to the sound of breaking chains. I have a reading to share with you. It's from Ecclesiastes and it's chapter 3. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I've seen the burden that God has laid on his people. He's made everything beautiful in its time. 
he's also set eternity in the hearts of all people. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there's nothing better for people to be happy and to do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure for everything and forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will revere him. Whatever is has already been and what will be has been before and God will call the past to account. And I saw something else under the sun in the place of judgment. Wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I thought in my heart, God will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity, a time for every deed. I also thought, as for people, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Their fate is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. As one dies, so dies the other. All have the same breath. People have no advantage over the animals. Everything is meaningless. All go to the same place. All come from dust, and to dust all return. Who knows if the spirit of humanity rises upward? and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth. So I saw that there is nothing better for a person to enjoy their work, because that is their lot. For who can bring them to see what will happen after them? An interesting chapter. Um, maybe the author of Ecclesiastes was a bit of a pessimist. I'm, 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 I'm an optimist. Um, what time is it? Well, according to my watch, it is 9.57 on the morning of Friday the 29th of December. And uh, I'm recording this for our online service for Queen Street for Sunday the 31st of December which of course is also the seventh day of Christmas. So what time is it? According to the author of Ecclesiastes there is a time for everything. That is to say there is a right time. Verse 1 there's a time for uh, everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Now whilst I would agree that you know some of these things make sense and agree with the sentiments of what's being said for example in verse 2 there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. Verse 3b there's a time to tear down and a time to build. Verses 4 to 7, there's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak. You know, I agree with those things, but I can't agree wholeheartedly with all that the author says. For example, verse 3, there's a time to kill, a time to kill. Verse 8, a time to hate, there's a time for war. The gospel, the good news of Jesus tells us that we are to live in the light of the teaching of Christ 
who said the greatest commandments of all are that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. We should love our neighbour as we love ourselves. And to his disciples he said, greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. And he said, you should love one another as I have loved you. And so the gospel is a call to love and to be loved. So in the light of the gospel, can we truly say there is a time to kill, a time for hate, a time for war? Or was the author merely observing life as it was? Sadly, that this is a world fact, that then as now, there are those who kill, there are those who hate, there are those who go to war. What time is it? I believe it's time to love and to be loved. It's a time for us to pray for peace. Peace in our world and peace in our time. In the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, we should pray for peace and not give up. We should pray that the Holy Spirit would raise up peacemakers in this world. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. What if your neighbour's a troublemaker? What if you make a, uh, you, you, your neighbour is always making life difficult for you? Well, I would suggest that we go on loving the person and maybe hate what they do or represent. What time is it? It's a time for love. It's a time for peace. What time is it at Queen Street Methodist Church? Well, first of all, it's a time for looking back and as we look back on the year of our centenary celebrations, there is much to rejoice in and to give thanks to God for. And um, I just want to say thank you to all those who have taken part in and, and attended some of the many, many events that have taken place. And we rejoice in those opportunities when we have been able to worship and share our celebrations with others. What time is it here at Queen Street? It's a time for looking uh, at the present and we thank God for all that is. We thank God for our building which is in good shape, for those who look after it and care for it. We thank you for the opportunities we have um, to share the gospel through the sharing of our building and offering hospitality. We thank God for the opportunity we have week by week to gather together to worship him. Now I know some of you are unable to worship with us in person and this is your opportunity online to worship. But what time is it? It's, it's time, it's always time for worship and it may be that some of you are watching this on, on any day but <clears throat> the day on which it was recorded for, which is a kind of a sign that it's always time to worship. But as you worship, remember that God calls you into the company of your brothers and sisters in Christ. God didn't call the disciples into isolation. He called them into the fellowship of believers to share together and so I would urge you if and whenever you can to worship in person with God's people for that is the way God made us for fellowship with one another and fellowship with him it's time for fellowship so I would pray throughout this coming year do take the opportunities to share in fellowship whenever and wherever you can. Hopefully there will be opportunities to pray together, 
to worship together, to study God's word together. Take those opportunities. Come and relax together. Come and share in our popping on a Saturday morning. It's time for fellowship. It's time to volunteer. Uh, can I encourage you, if, if you've got time on your hands, to consider how you might take time and volunteer. We need volunteers. Some of you uh, may be um, detached from the church because you're confined to your homes. But there are other opportunities to volunteer. Letters of encouragement, phone calls, an opportunity to pray for people. But here at Queen Street we need volunteers, uh, people to help us, um, to work with us, to serve God um, on, the, on the business team, the property team, um, serving behind the coffee bar, helping and supporting um, our outreach, working with those who come on a, on a Tuesday morning to Noah's Ark and so on. Can I encourage you to offer what you can and when you can and where you can. What time is it? It's time for us to continue our journey with Christ as individuals. We need to spend time with him, time in prayer, time being still, time reading his word, growing in our faith, hopefully being drawn into a deeper understanding of his love for us and his presence with us. And so as we move towards a new year, I pray that each and every one of us will be committed on our journey of faith, expectant of what God will do for us in the days ahead, excited as we anticipate the way that God will work in us and through us. What time is it? It's time for me to finish, but not without saying, when it comes, I wish you a very happy, a very peaceful and a blessed new year. God be with us. Amen. So it's a huge thanks to Graham for his timely message. Um, what a fantastic year we've had for our centenary. It's been a privilege to see some of the preachers come back to Queen Street, whether that's coming back in person or online. It's been a privilege to be part of so many events that have made it a really special year. When I was thinking about what how I might respond to Graham's message, I was pondering, well, where do I fit and my family fit in Queen Street's outreach and with I work in the boys breed and I think that's really where obviously where our focus is and really sometimes we can get caught up a little bit in what's going on across the world and what's going on in Parliament in the UK what matters are happening and while we need to pray and we need to do all we can we need to give of our money, we need to give of our time to try and help those far-flung places. We can never, ever forget just how important Queen Street Church is to the outreach into the community around our building. So what time is it? Well, I think it's a time to change the world around us. Not the huge world, but the the smaller world, the one around our person, the one around our church, the one around the people we know and love. I'm a huge fan of the West Wing. Um, it was 
seven series long, 22 episodes in each series. It's a long old t- programme. I've watched it at least three or four times. I just love it. Um, but one day, in the, the president is appointing a new member of his closest advisors and he says I ask everybody who comes into my team to make a promise and he says never doubt that a small group of thoughtful and committed citizens can change the world and then he asks him do you know why that is and the response comes back well because that's the only thing that ever has so I in response to Graham's message today it's time to realise that We should not doubt that a small group of thoughtful and committed Christians can change the world forever. Because it's the only thing that really ever has. Shall we pray? Majestic Lord, help us to understand that there is a time for everything. And throughout this period of centenary, we've celebrated what's gone before and we've looked ahead to what comes next. But never more so than on the 31st of December 2023 can we think, well, what comes next? In our 101st, in our 131st, in our 191st year, how can Queen Street Methodist Church and its small group of dedicated, thoughtful Christians change the world around that building and do it forever. We pray that we will remember that that happens where God is at the centre, where we're Christ-focused, that you are our Lord and our Saviour and our friend are at the heart of everything. We love you, Lord. Amen. At the beginning of the year, um, I challenged you to pray for 100 people over this year. And I know we've been doing that as a church and individually. I've kept that list of 100 people on my phone and regularly i'll scroll through it and pray for each of those when i've got some time in my lunch break at work when i'm in my quiet time first thing in the morning other times when there's just moments when i would just be sort of doom scrolling on my phone do something productive and look at that instead i hope you found that useful and i hope you've managed to pray for some of those people throughout the year Just think of the impact those prayers have made throughout the whole of 2023. I encourage you to keep that list, keep praying for those people and continue to see the impact that God has. For our prayers of intercession today, I want you to have a look at that list again. As we listen to this track and just pray through those hundred people. Pray that God does remarkable things that are beyond our understanding. So let's pray. With a prayer you fed the hungry, with a cry you stilled the storm, with a look you had compassion on the desperate and forlorn with a touch you healed the leper with a shout you raised the dead with a word expelled the demons with a blessing broke the bread love and As a 
silent in your pain. You endured humiliation at the hands of those you made, and as hell unleashed its fury, you were lifted on a tree, crying, "Father God, forgive them, place their." Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again online in two weeks' time. And on the 7th of January, we have our Covenant service uh, in person at Queen Street at 10.30. We'd love to see you there if you're able to join us. And so, a blessing to finish. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Happy New Year. <laughs>